everyone, and thank you so much for taking time out of your day to join today's Needy Med special topic webinar, Meal Prepping for Spoonies. My name is Carla. I'm the Director of Education at Needy Med. And before we kick off today's presentation, I want to go over just a few points. You can feel free to ask any questions you may have by typing them into the questions section of your GoToWebinar control panel. Just know that we are going to reserve answering questions until the end. If we don't have the time to answer your particular question, we will follow up with you personally via email after the webinar, probably within about 24 hours. Also, the heads up that this webinar is being recorded and will be available for viewing on the Needy Meds YouTube page soon. And you can find that on the top right-hand side of the Needy Meds homepage, where, you, where um, the link for YouTube is with the rest of the social media icons. And again, that's on the top right-hand top side of needymeds.org. So with that, let me talk to you a little bit about what Needy Meds is for those of you that are not familiar. We are a national nonprofit, and there's a slide indicating our mission statement that was actually updated in 2016 to more accurately reflect what we, we do. And as you can see, our mission statement reflects that we are dedicated to educating and empowering those seeking affordable health care. And we do that by connecting people free and anonymously to programs that will help them afford their health care costs through either our toll-free helpline or our website. And I always put a snapshot of our website in my PowerPoint because really our website is the face of our organization. But as I said, a big part of our mission is education. And we fulfill that part of our mission really in two ways. The first way is by spreading the word about Needy Meds and the resources we have to offer by also letting people about, know about other resources available and ways to stay healthy, which is why we are so pleased to have our expert from PAC Health with us today, Abby, ha Abby Harris. So first, let me tell you a little bit about PAC Health. PAC Health is a digital health coaching company that helps people with chronic conditions live their happiest, healthiest lives. You set the goal, and your PAC Health Health Advisor will help you get there with weekly coaching calls and personalized follow-up. So now let me tell you a little bit about Abby. Abby studied at Auburn University for her undergraduate degree in nutrition and dietetics. She then moved to Birmingham, Alabama to complete her dietetic internship at the University of Alabama at Birmingham. Simultaneously, she earned a master's in nutrition science. She has experience in corporate wellness and personal nutrition counseling, which is where she learned how to make healthy living, excuse me, healthy eating realistic for everyday life. And you can see um, with that resume and what she focuses in, on day to day, why we are just thrilled to have her share her expertise with the Needy Meds audience. So today, Abby's presentation is going to focus on meal prepping. So meal prepping, as we said in our description of this webinar, isn't just for gym rats and nutrition gurus. It's really for all of us. It can help us all save time, money, and energy. And that's particularly important if you're living with a chronic condition. Abby's going to explain how meal prepping can help you stay true to your healthy eating goals and work around barriers you may have, anything from dietary restrictions to physical limitations. She's also going to walk us all through a step-by-step -step guide to meal prepping and share specific pro tips she's learned as a meal prepper herself, as a dietitian, and as a PAC Health health advisor. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and pass the mic and the screen to our expert, Abby. So bear with me while we go ahead and do that. And Abby, you should be able to take it away. Thanks everybody for your patience. Oh, and actually one of the things that I promised I wasn't going to forget to mention, but I did, in the handout section of that GoToWebinar control panel, you'll see three attachments. One is my PowerPoint presentation. More importantly, the other two is Abby's PowerPoint slide, as well as some meal prepping, a meal prepping guide that she'll talk to you about a little bit through that presentation. So I didn't want to forget to tell you guys that that was there. So anyway, Abby, take it away and everyone enjoy. All right, thanks Carla for that introduction. Uh, welcome everyone and thank you for joining us today. Uh, as Carla said, my name's Abby. I'm a registered dietitian and uh, also a health coach at Back Health. 
Uh, so today's topic, I'm just going to share a little bit uh, about meal prepping. I will also share some tidbits for all my Spoonie friends out there and others dealing with, with chronic conditions. So Pack Health and Spoonie Living will actually both be live tweeting throughout the event. So uh, follow us if you want some extra tips or even want to share a few ideas of your own. So uh, with further ado, let's get started. So how many of you have caught yourself staring at the refrigerator for 20 minutes, wondering what in the world you will eat for dinner? As time passes, not only have you wasted 20 minutes, but you have also eaten half a box of crackers while you stared at the fridge. How many of you have been running late in the morning and sacrificed breakfast? And as a result, you're ready for lunch by 10 and head to that vending machine for a candy bar or even a honey bun. So today, I just want to share some tips and tricks about meal planning so we can hopefully prevent those kinds of situations and also help you stay on track with your health goals. So what pops into your head when I say the words meal prepping? For most people, they envision dozens of Tupperware all lined up, every meal and snack pre-made, with food portioned out perfectly. While this does work for some people, and I really do admire those who do it, uh, it can be hard for most. And meal prepping, so meal prepping does not have to be eating the same thing every day or long complicated recipes with ingredients you can't even pronounce. It's also not about spending hours in the kitchen. Meal, meal prepping is supposed to make life easier, right? It's not meant to create more stress in your life. Meal prepping can be adjusted to fit you and your family. Different strategies work for different people. You just have to find what works best for you. So now that we have discussed what meal prepping is not, let's talk about what it is. When I explain meal prepping, I like to keep it simple. I always go back to three basic steps. One, make a plan. Two, shopping for those ingredients. And three, preparing your meals. I guess you could add a fourth and say eat and enjoy. So there are a lot of benefits when it comes to meal planning. First, it can save you money. By planning your meals, you can buy in bulk and head to the store knowing exactly what you need. I've been to the store so many times without a plan and get home and feel like I have nothing to make a complete meal. Not only am I still hungry, but I feel like I've wasted food and money. So say goodbye to that food waste and getting more than what you need. Secondly, prepping will save you time. While it can be an investment of your time up front and a few extra minutes on a Sunday evening, it will pay off in the end. Think of the time you spend driving to a restaurant, waiting in line and picking up food. If, you're, if your meals are prepared ahead of time, you will just need to grab, heat and eat. And so guess what? When you're saving time and money, you will be less stressed too. Thirdly, you will learn about portion control. And lastly, and most importantly, you are making an investment in your health. The thing I love about meal planning is that you are in control and there are so many options. You can try new fruits and vegetables and you know exactly what is going into your body. So before we can get into the planning, we first need to discuss what a healthy meal looks like. At Peck Health, we simplify healthy eating by using this image here. When building a plate, always start with the non-starchy vegetables. So these non-starchy vegetables have a lot of water content and, in low, and are low in carbohydrates and calories. They are also high in fiber and vitamins to keep you full and energized. Half of your plate, or about one and a half cups, should be filled with this group. Examples include green beans, cauliflower, tomatoes, broccoli, and so many more. You should also have a grain or starch on your plate. The grain uh, starch group provides you with the macronutrient carbohydrates. Despite what popular diet fads claim, carbohydrates can be a part of a healthy diet. It is actually our body's favorite source of energy, and it provides you with essential vitamins and minerals. However, not all carbs are created equally. Carbohydrates should come from foods that are whole grain and contain a lot of fiber. Examples are brown rice, sweet potatoes, quinoa, couscous, white potatoes, corn, and beans. One fourth of your plate 
or one cup should be a starch. Your fist is actually a really good visual for this. Um, you so, um, so if you ball your fist up, that would actually be one cup. So be sure to use your hand as your guide. The last portion of your plate should be a protein. So protein is the building block of your muscles and tissues and is also used to make hormones and enzymes in your body. Sources include fish, turkey, chicken, and lean cuts of pork or beef. You can also get protein from plant sources like beans, tofu, and grains. If you are eating meat, you should aim for three to four ounces of lean protein, or if you're eating plant-based protein, aim for one cup. You can again use your hand as a guide. Here's a good rule of thumb. The size of the palm of your hand is how much a serving of meat, of meat should be. If you feel like overeating is an issue for you, try using smaller plates to get those portions back in check. So now let's get started with the meal prepping. Before you can prep, you need the right tools. Here's a list of a few products that I find work the best. First, let's talk storage. If you're preparing food ahead of time, you need quality products that will keep it fresh and organized. I personally use the glass lock container set in the above left photo. They are glass, which makes them easy to clean and very durable. The lids also have clasps that make them very secure. The Rubbermaid containers are plastic and a little less expensive, but equally as effective. As you can see, they come in a lot of sizes, are microwavable and dishwasher safe. The Pyrex containers on the bottom left make unloading the dishwasher a breeze because the lids are actually color coordinated. The bento boxes on the bottom right are great if you take your lunch to work and want to stick to one container. There are different compartments to better organize your food and in addition to keep, it, keep everything separated. Lastly, a simple mason jar can be used for storage or any other recycled product at that. As long as you've properly cleaned it, this is a great money saving option. When it comes to freezing items, simple freeze ba bags or gladware containers work. Don't forget a Sharpie for labeling. For cooking, a crock pot or pressure cooker, like the Instant Pot, work great for those with busy schedules. I also recommend getting a quality knife and cutting board to make slicing and chopping easier. Also, Diane, our friend from Spoony Living, recommends grabbing a chair and investing in a rolling cart, which is actually pictured on the right here. Um, this is good if you're feeling overly fatigued. Check out her blog, which she will, we will actually share at the end, uh, for other suggestions for cooking hacks with a chronic condition. So the first step of meal pre prepping is making a plan. So set aside 30 to 40 minutes each week to plan out your meals. I personally plan on Sunday evenings because that's when I have the most time, but it can also be done in segments. For instance, if you're slicing veggies for one dish and you happen to have a bit left over, freeze them for another recipe later in the week. Or if you're feeling extra energized, cut a few more veggies and have them readily available when you're not feeling so hot. You'll hear me say this a lot, but meal planning is about finding a routine that works for you. When you do plan, you'll want to have a way to visualize and schedule your meals. A simple pen and paper will do. You can also use Excel on your computer or by a meal planning calendar. We are providing you with Pack Health's meal planning guide, which is also a great resource. Again, finding whatever works best for you. Now, before making your plan, you need to know your schedule. Do you have kids uh, that have a, a basketball game that night? Are you headed to church on Wednesday evening? Maybe you're headed to dinner with friends. It is important to know if you'll need a 10 minute meal, a packed lunch, or even a healthy plan to eat out. It is also important to take inventory of your pantry. Know what you have already. This will help you choose your recipes and lower cost. If you have a full size freezer, you've hit the gold mine. Use this to your advantage to prepare foods far in advance. So if you're having a bad flare and need quick access to food, you've got options. So let's talk a little more about choosing your recipes. When I'm trying to decide what to cook, I always refer back to the healthy plate. 
make sure to always include these three components of a meal, a healthy carb, a protein, and a veggie. If you pick one food from each food group, you will have a complete and balanced meal. I also recommend creating a go-to list, basically a list of eight to 10 recipes that you can always turn to. The recipes on your list are tried and true and ones you know you and your family will like. Say you cook two to three meals from your go-to list a week, it will be almost a month before you cycle through and even have to repeat a recipe. It will take some time up front to compile your list, but it will save you so much time when it comes to planning and cooking. For inspiration for recipes, I recommend Pinterest, Cooking Light and other health magazines and organizations like the American Heart and American Diabetes Associations. Try searching for slow cooker recipes in one dish meals. A lot of times they can be prepared on the stovetop with minimal cleanup. If you are overwhelmed by the amount of recipes out there, I encourage you just to pick one and make it. If you like it, add it to your list. If it is not your favorite, pick a new recipe to try again. You can also try having a theme night. Breakfast for dinner or breakfast for dinner on Mondays or Taco Tuesdays are just a few of my favorites. So now that you have your list and meals planned, it's time to get organized and grocery shop. Before you go to the store, categorize your grocery items. Divide your items by produce, meats, dairy, canned goods, and etc. On the meal planning guide we've provided, there is a page where you can do this. Categorizing your items will make it easier in the store and allow you to get in and out quickly. Also, if, you're fat if you fatigue easily, try an electric cart or try a grocery delivery service like Shift. Pack Health members actually get a discount, so be sure to ask your health advisor more about that. Be sure to stick to your list. I cannot emphasize how important this is. It's not the meal ingredients that run up your grocery bill, but the extras you stick in your cart last minute. Remember, grocery stores are smart and they know how to market. Lastly, find a good time to do your shopping. It's less crowded early in the morning or later in the evening, right after work, Sunday mid-afternoon, or right before a major sporting event, especially down here in Alabama, can be really crowded and double your shopping time. So now that you have your ingredients, you will need to prepare them. And don't be afraid to test out the pre-prepared items at the grocery store, like pre-sliced vegetables, pre-boiled eggs, or pre-cooked meat. I suggest washing, slicing, and storing your fruits and vegetables right when you get home from the store. Pull out your knife and cutting board, turn on some music or the cooking channel, and get to work. You can then store them in containers or even Ziploc bags. While you are slicing ve your veggies, you can prepare your meats and grains. Boil your boiled chicken while you're slicing a zucchini, or roast potatoes while you're washing and pulling your grapes from the stem. If you're not looking to cook chicken, buy a rotisserie chicken and pull the meat right when you get home. You can then use it on top of salads or throw it into a rice dish. When it comes to how long to keep your foods, meats usually stay fresh for three to four days and grains last for about four to five. But do your research here. Some vegetables do best if they're stored in a container with a wet paper towel. For an eco-friendly option, Use a store-bought sponge that's pre-soaked to avoid the chemicals and then place it in the container. So now I'm gonna walk you through some different breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snack ideas that have really worked for me. So let's start with breakfast. Mornings can be rushed for me. If not rushed, I might just not be in the mood or even fully awake to make anything. It is important for me to have a breakfast that is easy and requires little preparation. When planning my meals, I usually pick two recipes and alternate. One is usually savory and the other is sweet. The difference in flavors gives me enough variety. For my savory options, I turn to eggs. I get a lot of questions about eggs and cholesterol. More research is showing that the cholesterol in eggs is not related to your blood level cholesterol. The dietary guidelines actually removed the 300 milligram limit of daily cholesterol. Eggs can actually have a, a lot of nutritional benefits. One egg has seven grams of protein and will keep you full and energized for your day. 
My first egg recipe are the make ahead breakfast sandwiches. I use whole wheat, English muffins, turkey or Canadian bacon, one slice of cheese and a microwaved egg. Crack an egg in a microwave in a coffee mug, microwave for about a minute and you will have the perfect sized egg for a breakfast sandwich. I then assemble the sandwiches and have them ready for the week. You can also wrap them in saran wrap and stick them in the freezer. I also like egg muffins. With these, I whisk eggs, shredded cheese, and a few of my favorite vegetables like spinach, tomatoes, and mushrooms. I divide the mixture evenly into a muffin tin and then bake for 20 minutes at 375 degrees. Now for my sweet breakfasts, I opt for oatmeal. Oats contain soluble fiber, which can reduce your LDL cholesterol, improve insulin and blood sugars, and also increase production of your satiety hormone. Basically, you won't feel as hungry. Overnight oatmeal is an easy breakfast you can make the night before. Combine a, a half cup of oats with one cup of liquid of your choice, like milk, yogurt, or even almond milk if you're dairy free. You then add in toppings and spices like cinnamon, berries, or sliced almonds. Try to get creative here. Then, Put it in the fridge overnight and let the liquid absorb into the oats. You can eat it cold or heat it up. Remember me talking about those mason jars? These are perfect storage containers for the overnight oats. Lastly, yogurt is a great breakfast, particularly Greek yogurt. So Greek yogurt is made by taking regular yogurt and straining it to remove excess liquid and sugar. As a result, the Greek yogurt is higher in protein. It also contains probiotics, which are great for gut health. When looking for a yogurt, check the label and pro buy products with at least five grams of protein and less than 10, 10 grams of added sugar. Yogurt parfaits and smoothies with fruit are my favorite ways to get, in, get it in in the morning. Another use for the mason jars is to pre-assemble smoothies. Gather your ingredients and store in a jar so all you have to do is dump it into the blender, blend, and eat. Similar to breakfast, I like to keep my lunches simple. I personally prepare my lunch the night before, but like I've said throughout, meal prepping is what works best for you. So if you find it easier to prepare all five lunches on Sunday before the week starts, then go for it. I always go back to basics when planning my midday meal. I really love a good sandwich. I usually make a batch of chicken or tuna salad and put it on a whole wheat wrap or bread. For my salads, I actually use Greek yogurt instead of the mayonnaise. This easy swap cuts the fat by nearly half and doubles the amount of protein. Avocados or guacamole, or guacamole also make a good base. If you're looking for a low carb option, swap the bread for lettuce. I find butter or bib lettuce to work best. It holds well and has the perfect pocket to place your filling. It is also good for people with Crohn's and IBS because it's a more tender lettuce and is easy, easily digested. Salads are a quick and easy option too. Diane from Spooning, Spoonie Living suggests slicing your salad contents on Sunday evening so you can easily build your salads throughout the week. She has a great blog post about this on her site. Another use for the mason jars is to layer your favorite salad ingredients into them. When it is time to eat, add your favorite oil-based dressing, put the lid on, and shake. Now grain bowls are another one of my favorite go-tos. My own definition of a grain bowl is your favorite ingredients all tossed into one big bowl. You get a lot of different textures, flavors, and all the food groups in one dish. There's no recipe when it comes to a grain bowl. But the basic structure is a grain, such as spinach, kale, arugula, or a mix, a grain, like quinoa, couscous, farro, or rice. For protein, I like to add a half cup of beans. Chickpeas and black beans are two of my favorites, but other types could easily work. If you have trouble digesting beans, you could also use chicken, tuna, or tofu as your source of protein. Next, add your toppings. You could use anything from veggies, cheese, to avocado. And finally, pick your sauce. Salsa, oil and vinegar, lemon juice, or even hummus are good options. One of my favorite bowls is the Greek bowl, which is similar to the picture on the bottom left. 
This bowl is a mixture of arugula, quinoa, chickpeas, tomatoes, cucumber, feta cheese, and an oil and vinegar dressing. Lastly, soups make for great lunches too. You can make a big batch on the stovetop or in the crock pot. You may even have enough to freeze for later. I do recommend when you make soups to choose one that is broth or tomato based and to try to use low sodium products. So when it comes to dinners, I always think about my healthy plate and making sure I have a starch, protein, and vegetable. Sheet pan dinners are my favorite way to do that because they are so quick and easy to clean. Simply pick your protein, like chicken or fish, your starch, like diced sweet potatoes, and a non-starchy vegetable, like green beans. Toss in olive oil and your favorite seasonings and bake on a sheet pan at 400 degrees for about 15 to 20 minutes. If you want an even easier cleanup, line your sheet pan with aluminum foil. Another easy dinner idea is a stir fry. Combine a grain, a protein, and veggie into a wok or frying pan, and you have a one-dish meal. For a low-carb option, I recommend the green giant riced vegetables. You can find them in the freezer section at your local grocery store. Pasta dinners are also great because they can feed a crowd, or you can free freeze the leftovers. If you are avoiding gluten for health reasons, try quinoa, bean, or lentil pasta. I highly recommend the Banza pasta, which is actually made from chickpeas. It has a great texture and has 25 grams of protein and 13 grams of fiber per serving. You can also use spaghetti squash or spiralized vegetables as a pasta alternative. And lastly, casseroles are great for meal prepping. While casseroles can be full of fat and cheese, you can make them healthy. Add extra veggies to that chicken and rice or make substitutions. Use Greek yogurt instead of cream cheese or try fat-free condensed soups instead of the regular. So let's talk spices. Spices are great. They can be used in different combinations to make one meal into 20. They also have a lot of nutritional benefits. To get the most of their health benefits, fresh would be best but there is certainly no harm in using the dried. So what are some good spices to use and what can they do for our health? Most people know about garlic, but few know of the health benefits it provides. Studies show that garlic can help decrease blood pressure and improve cholesterol, and cholesterol levels and your immune system. Cinnamon, another common spice, has been shown to lower blood pressure, decrease inflammation, and improve blood sugar. Cinnamon can imitate the effects of insulin and improve insulin's ability to move sugar out of the blood and into your cells. Add a little to your oatmeal, hot tea, or even a chili or stew. Turmeric is another spice that is shown to fight inflammation. Add a half teaspoon to your eggs, roasted vegetables, or a soup or curry. It provides a distinct flavor as it has both spice and sweetness. For a full list of benefits and uses of turmeric, check out the Spoonie Living blog. If you are looking to add a, uh, add a kick to your meal and increase metabolism, use cayenne pepper. Its active ingredient, capsaicin, increases the amount of heat in your body, causing you to burn more calories. Lastly, cumin, a spice found in parsley, has potential health benefits. Studies show cumin can activate digestive enzymes. Therefore, it helps with digestion and can even relieve symptoms of irritable bowel syndrome. So when it comes to snacks, go with things that are pre-made. Take snack time as a way of getting a, an extra dose of fruits and vegetables. Like I mentioned earlier, go ahead and wash and slice or chop your produce right when you get home from the store. For a more filling snack, add two tablespoons of hummus, nut butter, or guacamole or opt for a cheese stick. The protein and fat will keep you full and satisfied until your next meal. If you need a portable option, RX bars are a whole food and low ingredient protein bar you can find at most grocery stores. So just to conclude uh, and to give yourself a little pep talk, uh, be realistic and start slow, especially if this is something totally new for you. Meal prep is extremely personal. Everyone will do it differently because everyone eats differently. Remember that you're learning the best way, you, way to do it for you, and that will take some time. At Pack Health, we like to make tiny steps. 
These tiny steps are small goals that you focus on each week. It won't start as a well-oiled machine, so don't try and do it all at once. Make one small change and build from there. Your prep routine and habits will change over time, and that's a good thing. Always be learning and trying new things. You will get there and your health will benefit. I did want to share some resources from the Spoonie Living, from Spoonie Living that I mentioned. So here's a link to the blog and YouTube series, which, which offers a, a good visual way to see different cooking techniques and ideas. Finally, I wanted to share about the services we offer at Pack Health. So our mission is to help people manage their chronic conditions, but also to live a healthier lifestyle. We have a few grant funded programs that we wanna make available to you. You can register with the link on this slide and get started with your own personal health advisor. So thank everyone for tuning in and now I'm gonna open it up for any questions that you guys may have. Abby, thank you so much for sharing your expertise with the Needy Meds audience. Um, we at Needy Meds are big fans of Pack Health and I think Abby I've just really demonstrated why. Um, they're experts on the Pack Health team but what they do is they break down these health suggestions into, and you'll hear this if you um, take advantage of getting a PAC Health Coach or checking out um, their website, is that they, break, they take all of this information and break it down into tiny, measurable, actually att um, attainable goals for regular people like myself. Um, in particular, I, there's, a few, there's a few tips that I wrote down um, that I will absolutely be incorporating into my life. And of course, I'll, I'll get to those later. Um, but in the meantime, I do want to remind everybody, I do see a couple of questions coming in, which is great. You can feel free, and go ahead, um, feel free to go ahead and remind her to submit those questions via the questions section in your GoToWebinar control panel. I'm going to take just a moment before I ask Abby to field those questions. And Abby, if you can go ahead and pass the screen back to me, that would be great. What I want to do is um, make sure everybody is also aware, um, and I think I could grab that, just bear with me. I think I could, um, I, one of the things I wanted to do is, as Abby had said, um, Pack Health Goals, although it's helping people with chronic conditions live a better life, they're really helping people regardless of what their health, current health status is, to be healthier in general. And our, our mission here at Needy Meds aligns with that because one of the obstacles to living a healthy life is simply getting access to the medication and the health care needs that you have. So just a reminder that we are here to help. So please don't hesitate to check out our website, needymeds.org, or call our experts at our call center, 1-800-503-6897. And of course, I'll put that contact information up at the end if you are looking for help affording your medication or other health care needs. We're here to help you out with that. Another reminder before I ask Abby the questions is that there are the handouts, um, um, excuse me, there are the documents that we use during today's presentation, including both of the PowerPoint presentations, as well as a really helpful meal prepping guide. And those are in the handout section of your GoToWebinar control panel. And again, if you have trouble downloading them or accessing them, don't hesitate to shoot me an email after the webinar. So Abby, one of the questions coming in, and one thing I do want to take a moment to say that um, that what really spoke to me, my tiny measurable steps after this will be, I truly do like salads, and a lot of people may, will agree, but I don't want to go through the energy every day of cutting up all those little pieces. It never occurred to me what you suggested, and I think our friends um, who are also um, sponsoring this webinar suggested as well, do pre-slice salad bits. I think that's great. The various uses for Greek, Greek yogurt was really helpful, um, and certainly those sheet plan dinners. So please feel free to share with us what tips you found so, so useful. Um, in the meantime, I'll go ahead and, and pass some questions along to Abby. Here's a great one that I think is applicable to a lot of people, and I'm glad somebody asked it. Here's how it came in. I travel a lot with work and on the weekends and find it hard to get to the store before it's time to make a meal. Do you have suggestions? 
Yeah, um, great question there, Carla. Um, thanks for whoever submitted uh, that there. And, and trust me, I've been there, you know, traveling on a weekend, get home on a, uh, a Sunday evening. You just don't have time to, to go to the store. But, you know, maybe after being gone or, or out and about, you know, you just want a, a home cooked meal. And so in, in those kind of switch situations, uh, I've come to find to, to keep a, a few pantry and freedom uh, freezer items, you know, just stocked. So, so, you know, I can, I call it my backup meals that I can always turn to. So an example might be, you know, I keep a, a box of whole wheat pasta, maybe a jar of marinara or pesto sauce uh, in the pantry there, and then maybe a, a bag of frozen vegetables. Um, now keep in mind, it's not a four, four course or a gourmet meal, but you know, it's something that's filling and nutritious and it can get the job done. Um, other ideas there, you know, eggs, they can last in your, your refrigerator up to a, a week and a half to, to two weeks there. Um, and so you can do a lot of different things with that. Make an egg sandwich with some whole wheat bread that you have in the freezer or boil a few that night. So you just have some, some healthy breakfasts that week. Um, one last option that I, I usually go to is uh, I usually keep some brown rice in my pantry and then also to a, a can of beans. So I get a healthy carb from the rice and then th those beans provide a, a good source of protein. So really get creative with it. Uh, again, finding what, what works best for you. Thank you so much for that thorough and again, really practical answer. That's one of the things I love about Pack Health that they make suggestions that I actually will follow through with. And also um, one of the products that you mentioned, a great freeze item is like that green giant frozen cauliflower, something along those lines that you can have um, in your freezer as part of a backup meal plan. Thank you for that. Another question coming in is, and this is another great question that I think is applicable to a lot of people. If you can tell us a little bit about a few of your, Abby, your favorite batch meals to make that are easy, they refrigerate well, and can be reheated. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, Usually when with my meal prepping, like I said, I usually do it on a Sunday evening. I always make some roasted vegetables. So going back to that sheet pan uh, that you were talking about, you know, you could really be versatile with this. So some broccoli, maybe some carrots, cauliflower, asparagus, green beans. Um, and with those vegetables, they're roasted. I could either use it as a side. I could throw it on top of salads, even eat it with breakfast in the morning. So that's one thing I... I recommend just to make sure you have because like I said you want to try and get that healthy plate in uh, every day. A few others uh, that I like to do again going back to the sheet pan recipe and I believe there was a picture of it on the slide but um, you know just simple chicken breast some diced white potatoes and some green beans toss that in some olive oil maybe even some uh, Italian seasoning talking about the garlic and the health benefits you know throughout the presentation that's something easy that reheats well. Uh, one of my favorite like casserole dishes, um, it's actually like a chicken and rice uh, and broccoli dish. Uh, it's one pan. Um, it, it makes a good bit. So if you don't eat it all throughout the week, uh, you can stick it in the freezer. And, and that tip, you know, talking about the Greek yogurt, it actually uses the Greek yogurt instead of the, the condensed soups or, um, you know, as its base there. Um, so that's a, another good one. Uh, but yeah, so that's, roasted veggies in that, and the sheet pan recipe, some of my go-tos. Fantastic. Thanks so much, Abby. We do have another couple of questions coming in, and one is really a great one. It's specifically about PAC Health and how it's really run. This um, audience member wants to know, are all the programs online, or are there local chapters? So this may give you an oppor opportunity, Abby, to talk a little bit more about PAC Health and how those health coaches operate. Yeah, certainly. Um, so kind of the, the structure of the program. So it's all digital. So the member doesn't have to go anywhere. We'll communicate by phone, text and email. And so as far as the, as the um, specific program, if you're interested in doing it, you know, certainly go to the link and, and register there. And with that, you will be matched to your health advisor. And so that first enrollment call um, you know, your health advisor will kind of get a feel, you know, what they're looking for. Um, while there is some, some structure to it and what we do, you know, we want to find what works best for them. What's going to make, uh, make them succeed just with their health goals. Um, 
and, you know, even though your, your program is not listed and, and kind of what you said, Carla, about, you know, you don't have to have the, the chronic condition to participate. You know, we're here just to help you learn, help you to, to feel healthy and, and to live your best, best life. Right. And I think that's a really important sentiment that um, we have done tax health webinars. We've had the privilege of having health coach and experts from PAC Health host webinars for the Needy Meds audience. And you can find those previous webinars on the Needy Meds YouTube channel. We actually have a question about that, um, whether or not we can ask, our audience members can access this recording at a later date, and you can. We will convert it into a video and get it up on our YouTube channel as soon as we can, which will hopefully be by the end of the week. And you can find access to that YouTube channel, again, on the top right hand of needymeds.org. You'll see a whole bunch of social media icons, and one of those is a red icon for our YouTube channel. So yes, you will have access to this, as well as previous PAC Health webinars. But as I was saying, one of the great things and reason we aligned um, so well, I think, with PAC Health is that our our missions really are to help people remove obstacles that will encourage them, empower them, and assist them in, leaving, in, in living their healthiest lives. So as Abby had just driven home the point that you don't have to have been diagnosed with a chronic illness to benefit from PAC Health resources, so I would suggest checking out the previous webinars we've done as well. So I hope that answers your question. Um, we are actually running out of time. Um, for those of you that we didn't have a chance to answer your particular question, we'll be happy again to follow up with you via email by tomorrow afternoon at the latest. But of course, you can reach out to both PAC Health or Needy Meds at those links and the phone numbers on your screen. Don't hesitate. Um, if you do have any questions, we'd love to hear from you again. And thank you so much to our audience members for taking time out of their busy lives to join us. And thank you, Abby, for sharing your expertise with the Needy Meds audience. Yes, thank you, Carla, and thanks to, to everyone who listened today. Thanks. Have a great afternoon, everyone. Take care.